this is Lady Boule. Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to Black American Lineage. And today we are journeying again through our past. And I want to introduce you to the very first black astronaut. This is Robert Henry Lawrence. He was born October 2nd, 1935 in Chicago, Illinois. He was a United States Air Force officer and the first African-American astronaut. He graduated from high school at the age of 16 and four years later, he graduated from Bradley University with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. At Bradley, he became a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. So he's what is known in the black community as a Q. While in college, he distinguished himself as cadet commander in the Air Force ROTC and received the commission of second lieutenant in the Air Force Reserve Program. At the age of 21, he was designated as an Air Force pilot after completing flight training. At 22, he married Chicago native Barbara Press. His wife is the sister of the very popular and renowned late Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. This is a picture of his wife on the left. That's the best picture that I've found of her. And of course, Dr. Wilson is on the right. In 1965, he earned a PhD in physical chemistry from Ohio State University. He also became a senior Air Force pilot. He had accumulated over 2,500 flight hours, 2,000 of which were in jets. He flew many tests in the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter to investigate the gliding flight of various unpowered spacecraft returning to Earth from orbit, such as the North American X-15 rocket plane. NASA cited Lawrence for accomplishments and flight maneuver data that contributed greatly to the development of the space shuttle. So that was his brilliance on display. In June 1967, he successfully completed the Air Force's Test Pilot School. And this was at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The same month, he was selected by the Air Force as an astronaut in the Air Force's Manned Orbital Laboratory Program, thus becoming the country's first black astronaut. Lawrence and other astronauts, white ones, laughed when he was asked if he was going to sit in the back seat of the capsule. Now, this is 1967. In 1967, the United States was just now starting to drag itself into the modern age. So it's not surprising that segregation would be on those white astronauts' minds. So Robert Lawrence answered the question in the way that a black man who was trying to get ahead in 1967 would have answered such a question. He said, no, I don't think so. And then he added, it's another one of these things that we look forward to in civil rights, normal progression. So he gave him a good answer. There would be no reason for me to sit in the back seat if it wasn't for your segregation. He said that he had faced many problems like other blacks, but perhaps I have been more fortunate than the others in the opportunities. He was fortunate in that he was brought up in a middle-class family. He had been afforded a good education, and that good education enabled him to go into the Air Force as an officer and to get into a program that would make him the first black astronaut. Did you know Robert H. Lawrence Jr., 1967, was the first black astronaut but he died in a plane crash during a training flight and never made it into space. 
This is what happened. At the age of 32, he was killed in a plane crash at Edwards Air Force Base on December 8, 1967. He was flying in the back seat of an F-104 as the instructor pilot for flight test trainee Major Harvey Royer, who was learning the steep descent glide technique. Royer made such an approach but flared too late. So he made the approach but he flared too late. The airplane struck the ground hard. Its main gear failed. It caught fire and rolled. The canopy shattered and the plane bounced and skidded on the runway for 2,000 feet. Major Royal ejected upward and survived with major injuries. Yeah. The back seat, which delays a moment to avoid hitting the front seat, ejected sideways, killing Lawrence immediately. He was still strapped to his ejector seat. His parachute failed to open and he was dragged 75 feet from the wreck. So on that day, everything went wrong for Robert H. Lawrence. Now, I try not to be a conspiracy theorist, but if I was, I would say somehow that plane was rigged. Now his wife, like Coretta Scott King and Betty Shabazz, Malcolm X's widow, she pushed for recognition for her husband. Thanks to the lobbying of Mrs. Lawrence and others, the name of Major Robert H. Lawrence Jr. was added to a fallen astronaut's memorial at the Kennedy Space Center. But Robert Lawrence was initially rejected for the Space Mirror, a decision some called racism, which it was. Officials at the memorial said that the Air Force didn't consider him an astronaut because he never made a flight at least 50 miles above Earth. No, because he didn't live. The manned orbital laboratory, which he was a part of, was canceled in 1969 and the trainees were offered transfers to NASA. And the assumption is that he would have made it to space. Mrs. Lawrence and other relatives pushed for his inclusion at the memorial. And she got politicians involved. At a certain level, it's very hard to deal with this, Mrs. Lawrence told the Chicago Sun-Times. You know what he accomplished. And you know he's qualified. To have a bunch of people saying no, he doesn't qualify, that gets you mad. Six years after its 1991 dedication, Robert H. Lawrence's name was added to the memorial. And Mrs. Lawrence had to do what a lot of black women of prominent national figures have to do. She had to fight for the, her husband's legacy and for his recognition. This is another trailblazing African-American man, highly qualified, courageous, and willing to go the distance, not only for the country, but primarily for himself and for the black race. There is always the effort to try to prove that black people can't do it. You can't do it. And then they take away your opportunities and say, Oh, you couldn't do it. Well, you don't know if I could do it or not. I need a chance to try. I admire Mrs. Barbara Lawrence. When people say black women are masculine or black women have masculine energy, this is sort of what they're talking about. Having the courage to stand up and speak truth to power and be heard. He deserved this recognition and he wouldn't have gotten it. He would not have gotten it if his wife, his mother, his sister, and the people that they gathered around them had insisted and fought for it. And here she is on the right with his sister and his mother. 
They're looking at the space mural when his name was added to that memorial. So I say good for her. Major Robert Henry Lawrence is now in the history books. He is official. He is officially the first black astronaut in the United States of America. And he is recognized where the rest of the astronauts are recognized. So now you can rest easy, Major Lawrence. So thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.